ABC News contributor Mick Mulroy, former Deputy Secretary of Defense for the Middle East and retired CIA officer, joins us now for more. Mick, always good to see you. The Biden administration says the U.S. was not involved in this strike. Why is the U.S. staying out of at least the offensive uh, portion of this conflict? We, we, we know the U.S. shot down dozens of projectiles as Israel was being attacked. Well, I think it's clear that the U.S. really wanted to see this be contained and then de-escalated. And that, in part, is why they made sure that they weren't part of an offensive action, which, of course, could have been much more substantial. So I think Israel did this to show that they could actually reach deep into Iran. Istafar is very, very deep into Iran, and it's right next to one of their nuclear facilities. But it was a very limited strike, and it was just focused on the radar. So I think they wanted to show them that they could do it, but they also wanted to de-escalate this. And essentially, as was just said, get the fighters out of the ring, potentially back to the shadows, but certainly not see another response from Iran like we saw uh, earlier with that unprecedented uh, missile and drone attack. And, and to follow up on what you just pointed out, the target was a defense radar site that, that is part of this nuclear facility. Was there a strategy behind Israel's decision here with a such a limited strike and near this facility? What's at this facility? Yes. So the facility, the nuclear facility, is where they turn essentially yellow cake into uranium that can then be uh, increased in volume to the point where it becomes a part of the uh, process to make nuclear weapons. It's also fairly near Natanz, about 70 kilometers away, which is their main uh, nuclear site, and it's near an air base. So this shows that they could get, likely with gliding munitions, so the ability to stand off, not go, actually go into Iran, but launch these missiles uh, from fighter aircraft uh, that could actually get in there essentially undetected and hit the target. Uh, so it does show Iran that they really don't have that great of a air and missile defense, but it was very limited to give them the ability to essentially say nothing to see here and not have to retaliate, escalating this even further. And Mick, what do you think Israel's strategy is by not taking credit for this strike? So I think, Phil, that is part of the, the attempt to de-escalate. If you're not, you know, standing on a, on a stage you know, essentially bragging about this, then it gives Iran less of a reason uh, in their public's view to have to respond to it. So I think it's smart. It's generally what Israel does often uh, in the shadow war, so to speak. Uh, but this, I think, was deliberately intended, with one exception in the cabinet, uh, Israeli cabinet, uh, to be a silent uh, uh, activity so that Iran doesn't feel compelled to then have to attack uh, Israel again, therefore going up the escalation ladder rather than uh, holding where, where they are and potentially going back down, which is, I think, where we're going right now. And that's a really good thing. And obviously, make it's hard to sort of forecast what will happen next in one of the most dangerous parts of the world. But uh, does Iran retaliate once, uh, once more, at least, attempting a strike on Israel again in this round, as we heard it just talked about? Uh, or is the shadow war between the two countries simply continue? I think that's where we're headed because of the statements of the Iranian officials that are really trying to downplay uh, what happened here. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the, obviously the conflict between Iran and Israel is over. Iran generally prefers to use their proxy forces like Hezbollah, like Hamas, and like the Houthis and many militias that are located in both Iraq and Syria. So I think we could still see that. And of course, Israel is going to feel like they have to respond by targeting these IRGC Quds Force officers, which are the primary Iranian elements that work with those proxy forces, which is what started all this. So this, of course, right now, I think, is, is to a place where it will de-escalate, but that does not mean it's over, and it does not mean that this could not essentially start again if Israel then targets what they think is, a, is an imminent threat to them by these proxy forces. Yeah, and as you point out, we've been seeing missile exchanges, skirmishes in the north with Hezbollah even during all of this. Uh, Mick Mulroy, always appreciate your insights. Thank you so much.